Alrighty guys, thanks for checking out the channel today. Today is my very first Why Not Weekly show. So filming it here in the living room today, I'm on my lunch break from work. In the background you can see up there all my baseball figurines and collector stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a what's in the bookshelf later. Um, but look, I think we'll call this Why Not Weekly. I've got no idea why I've called it that, hence Why Not Weekly. Um, and the show can keep going as long as you comment below. So my thoughts are today, um, to keep it more interactive, You've asked me a lot of questions, now I'm going to ask you at home some questions, so um, I'll get to that at the end, but my question right now is going to be for you guys at home, so if you want to start thinking about it, is do you think the media is being a little bit hard on Tiger Woods? I personally think they are, because at the end of the day, I'd watch Tiger Woods shoot 100 off the stick if it meant I got to go and watch him, because in Australia, I think he's come here once or twice, and that's been in Melbourne and Sydney, never in Queensland, where I'm from in Brisbane here. And honestly, I'd go watch him shoot 100 off the stick just to see him play. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, he's not the player he used to be, but he still is Tiger Woods. The same thing, you know, I'd go watch Michael Jordan miss 10 three-pointers in a row just to see him shoot. You know, just to see what that logo looks like in real life. You know, the Air Jordan kind of logo. All right, but I'll get more into that question at the end. So let's start off first. We've got first question here from Supreme Golf. Uh, he says, hey Debo, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. He came over for the first time and was and was downright shocked at all the gear I have. My irons, for example. I love older classic iron models. If I spend 100 plus on a set of irons, that's no biggie because it's going to cost me to have extensions put in them and then re-gripped and wraps, etc. etc. I can't justify spending 1200 to 1500 on new clubs when three or four years you can get them at a fraction of the price. What's your take? I know you're a tall bugger, sleepless in North Dakota. Look, honestly, oh, okay, so that's 12 to 1500, that's, that's American. So I'm gonna say that price tag to me is probably between 1600 and two grand. Um, look, I've never, the only brand new sets of golf clubs I've ever bought were from a company called Alternative Golf and what they do, they're American and I bought these maybe 10 years ago. They specialize in copying the whole, the, you know, for example, they specialize in copying tailor-made and stuff like that. They change a few things, but the price is like about, I think for a full set, <coughs> for a full set of golf clubs, I think it was 275 bucks. And I used them for about five years, loved them. Couldn't get them, couldn't get rid of them. They were good. And to be honest, I think the reason why I got rid of them because I got tired of people teasing me about having knockoff golf clubs, but they worked. Um, look, I suppose when we did Charlie's, bought, Charlie bought his, I think they were like 11 or 1200, I can't remember. But if you're gonna play golf, one, two, three, four times a week, and you're gonna use those clubs for two or three years. Well, it works out to be maybe one or two bucks a round. So it's kind of, it's, it's probably not a bad investment, but that being said, I don't think I'd go as high as paying that. I'd rather wait till six months to eight months, wait till they start having some sales, because let's face, there's only so many people in this world that are gonna spend that kind of money on golf clubs. It's like Julian Hughes says, he'll wait till two or three years down the track and he'll buy the Mizuno that he really likes for a fraction of the cost. Um, Charlie uses a JPX 900, he loves it. I use the 850. The 850 is a year and a half, two years old, and I've tried the 900, I personally prefer the 850, and that's that's me. So I see no reason to change just yet, and I'm happy with that, because my wallet will remain reasonably thick. So, uh, but yeah, honestly, and I think for us tall guys, mate, is that we can't just go buy clubs off the shelf and expect them to fit. We actually have to go and get extensions put in them and stuff like that, and before you know it, that cheap set for 100 bucks is 10 and a four or 500 by the time you're getting grips and tapes and extensions and stuff like that, because, yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, we've got George Cassius, massive fan of the show. Thanks, George. We've got, he uses a Cleveland TFI 2135 blade putter. That's, there we go. And it's helped him out big time. Have you ever hit a hole in one? The closest he, George, got was five inches, then he put the putter into the ground and missed the birdie. Um, now I've got two really good stories for this. Now, first story when I was in college playing college baseball in America, I was playing in this this nice golf course about a half an hour from my college town. Um, I can't remember the reason why I went there. I think I was on my way to visit my auntie and uncle because I have family in America in St. Louis, Missouri. And I must have drove a half an hour from college on the way down, pulled into this little nine hole golf course. You know, it was a pitching part. I had a couple of par fours, but for the most part, 125 meter, 150 yard par threes. Now. The very, very furthest hole from the clubhouse was a tee at the bottom of the hill on the green at the top. Now, I've hit it, my tee shot on this par three, and it's gone towards the flag, and I've gone, oh wow, it's gonna be a good shot. 
And so I get up there, and and the ball's not on the green. And I've gone, oh, you know, excuse my excuse my French, fucking hell, what's going on here? And so for some reason, I've just chosen to look in the hole, and there it was. Now, I still to this day don't know if somebody was playing a joke at me because I looked around, and I was the only person on the golf course at that time at like five or six o'clock at night because it doesn't get dark till nine thirty back over in America there. So there's nobody in the car park. There's two or three guys in the driving range, but they were about. I don't know, maybe a quarter mile, if not more, more away, you know, 600 meters, something like that. Um, so I just wrote it down. I said a hole in one because it was going at the flag. It was a great shot, and there wasn't a, there wasn't a pitch mark, so I don't know what happened. But um, so that was my first hole in one. So I'm going to take it because I don't know if it, if it was an elaborate joke or somebody's still laughing 10 or 12 years later. They haven't told me yet. Now this the second hole in one. This is where it gets a little bit crazy. Now. I used to be a member of Nudgee College Golf Club, which is shut down now, which is how I met a few guys like Alan and all those guys, um, and Richo and all that. And it was on the uh, eighth hole at Nudgee College, which is like a 90 meter, a 90 meter par three. And it was on a uh, fundraising day. So it was a four ball Ambrose, still, still your hole in ones count. But I've hit a hole in one and the guy, the group in front of us, one of the guys was a bit of a, I'm not gonna mention names. He didn't get along with a lot of the younger guys. But at that stage I was about, Jesus. 26, something like that, it was about eight years ago, something like that, 26, 25. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't know, I can't remember. But anyway, I've hit the ball and I was using a yes wedge. Comment below, do you remember the yes wedges? I used to love those. Um, the amount of backspin you get on those is phenomenal. I've hit this ball, it's bounced once, checked, and on the second bounce, it's gone to the hole, straight in. We're all hooping and cheering around, going crazy. Now, anyway, this guy that doesn't like us, well, he never really liked many of the younger guys, he's a bit of a Nudgee College kind of used to be a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a golf course for the average guy was over the age of 50. It was, it was no, I loved it though, don't, don't get me wrong. Anyway, the guy after I hit the hole in ones walked up to the hole, he was in front of us, um, and he's picked up the ball out of the hole and looked at it and waved it around and like that and put it back in the hole. Now anyway, we didn't know what he was doing and he, we just cheered like that, blah, blah, blah. Get back to the clubhouse and I get a congratulations from everybody, but then I heard, heard there was a complaint that it should be disqualified because I actually didn't pick the ball out of the hole first, somebody else did. Now, there was somebody in that group that complained, the group in front of us with that guy, whether or not it was that guy or there's another guy in there that doesn't like his complaint and they tried as hard as they could to get that hole in one disqualified because a certain, somebody else pulled the ball out of the hole and, and waved it around and then put it back in. And apparently, you know, there's a rule in there somewhere where no other player can pull it out from a hole in one. Apparently, if you put it in, somebody else can, but Luckily, I got the hole in one, and if anything, it kind of caused a bit of controversy around the course that um, who would complain about something like that. And but yeah, so that's my two hole in ones, George. So thanks for copy, uh, commenting. So fish, we got fish. Uh, Andrew Fish, um, uh, he loves the idea. Hold on, we we had a bit of a communication there, so I won't read the whole thing. Um, <clears throat> fish asks me. Actually, fish uses a Odyssey Rosie two. Uh, he says, what is the biggest change in your golf swing in brackets, mental thought or, or swing thought in 2017? Honestly, I'm going to say my biggest change in my golf swing is going to have to be, I think, pardon me, everything. Um, I This is going to be the first year I just completely take 12 months off of baseball and concentrate as hard as I can into golf because I want to see what I can do. N not pro or anything like that. I know I'm never going to do that. Um, but I want to see what my capabilities are and I'm going to break everything down from how I walk up to the tee to how I you know bend over and pick up the tee stuff like that um, I really want to if golf is a game of repetition and muscle memory I really want to be able to start doing things I'm not even knowing them, not not knowing that I'm even doing meaning good things you know like have a positive walk up to the tee a couple of practice swings choose my line where I want to go and then walk up and hit the ball I think as I play a lot of YouTube golf and golf with mates is that we're too busy having fun with the golf as a secondary thing of what we're actually doing and I want to start playing more competition so I can see what my weaknesses are, keep statistics and stuff like that. So I think it's going to be a mental and physical swing process. And I think with GG Swing Tips, I'm picking up a lot of stuff there. Um, and physically, even, if no, even though I'm not getting it up, picking it up straight away, it's really making me think more now. Where I used to just go, yeah, I'll putt that off the green. Now I'm thinking, well, how's, how's that going to benefit me not trying to do something different in order to get better. If I'm, if I'm too afraid to do it, it's going to get worse, it's going to get worse. I'm going to get into a situation where I can't do it. For example, putting through a bunker up to a green. I'm going to just stuff up the chip. So yeah, but that's pretty much that. 
Mark Bounder here's a ping TR do you follow NFL mate you'd have made a great a tight end or offensive lineman or tight end for my Seattle Seahawks I noticed Charlie wears a Falcons hat Charlie's a big fan of anything Atlanta so Atlanta Braves Atlanta Falcons um, I don't know if he knows too much about the Falcons not but I know he's a huge um, Atlanta Braves fan um, long funny story when I was in college in America one thing I used to do was kick a football and when, when, when you when you pitch you when you when you basically pitch, you lift up your legs a lot to pitch and then and throw it um, and one thing I knew that helped me stretch was kicking a football and so I used to go down on the American football field of a few mates because they were always intrigued with this kind of rugby league ball that had Pepsi written on it in the NRL and back when it had Super League you know stuff like that I had one of those balls and um, all these people used to just sit there and all going because when you go obviously It'd be like when an American comes over to Australia and starts throwing an American football for this massive spot, we all stop and go, wow, look at that, because we're used to throwing an underarm, like rugby league or rugby union, stuff like that. Um, so I used to kick it down on my lawn um, in between classes, just stretching it out, and the American football coach came up to me and asked me if I'd be interested in punting for the team. And I was like, oh. Um, and then, but he never got permission from the baseball coach, so how college systems works is, um, each sport's given money for scholarships so if I were to get injured for my football scholarship then I'm no good for the baseball coach so why would the baseball coach pay me to go to college there so I'll pay my fees and stuff like that so um, I've actually always, I kind of wouldn't mind playing American football but the problem with being self-employed is that if I get injured on a Sunday well then I can't go to work and a lot of these insurance places that do the they give you money for getting hurt as self-employed they're really ugh, they're not as good as what they say. I don't know if you have these ads in America where they say for less than a cup of coffee a day you can insure yourself for a hundred grand a year or some crap like that. Um, yeah, that's why I've never really played too many contact sports since I've been um, self-employed because I've got to go to work on a Monday. So, I, you know, if I call in sick, I don't earn money. So, uh, Chris Pellet, Wilson 8802, it's an old school cool putter. <clears throat> what sparked your love for the game of golf? Do you have any ambitions, goals, playing like a certain tournament or golf course? <coughs> I think my love of golf, oh, to be honest, I can't even remember. I think when, when I was younger in grade 11 or 12, grade 11, we moved to Eaton's Hill, which is out at Albany Creek, which is for all you overseas, you wouldn't know what that is, but it was like a new subdivision that popped out, popped up about 20 minutes out of the city, 25 minutes, and um, there's this golf course there, and for about a year and a half, I used to drive past for school going, what is this? This is kind of cool, and... Um, actually backtracking, Greg Norman actually went to my high school so my love kind of came from constantly hearing about on, on our weekly parades of you know 2,000 kids weekly, he, or constantly hearing about what Greg's done you know stuff like that and when I was in high school from 1992 to 98 um, Greg I think was still playing and still quite big and or I think his shark brand was really big back then so he was really always in the, um, the public eye so we heard a lot about him and we had the Greg Norman um, golf tournament for our school which I finished second um, after playing about four or five rounds of golf in my life and I think naturally from baseball I picked up the game relatively easy just because I already had a bit of a swing plane anyway um, but I think my love for it came from driving past it so much and you know always hearing about Greg Norman going maybe I'll give this a go and and I didn't and that goes back to I'm going to do another video because I finally found my first ever set of golf clubs I've ever had so it's going to be amazing so it's going to be a good video coming up mate so but Chris, my love for it probably came from just, I suppose, you know, if you drove, kept driving past a bakery every day, every morning you kept smelling that smell of scones and croissants and biscuits, well, eventually you're going to go have to buy one, aren't you? So I think that's kind of like where my love came from. So Mike Hooper, Northern Virginia, USA, Ping, Crazy, Scottsdale, Mallet, Pala. Well, that's a big one. Great idea for a show. Did you see any tournaments that you that were in Australia? I think there was both women's and men's last month or so. Actually, Mike, yes i did i did see a tournament um if you go back about two or three months maybe like november december i did a four day vlog there adam scott was there oh jesus harold thingamajig the third vernard Ver how oh, i forgot his name sorry it's friday um harold varner harold varner the 30 fucking why not my bad um there was a four day vlog there where he went and got watch it and i think even my wife really liked it too it was actually quite a nice little experience the golf course where they're at now is where the women are too and um uh, there is quite a difference between the men's <coughs> and the women's tournament there men's tournament ropes it's full on the women's one it's a lot less it's it's unfortunate it's a lot less it, i suppose if the, the fans aren't there there's no reason to have as much there but 
I think it's building, it's getting better, but I think they're struggling for money from what I read in the paper, so. Um, but I think Volvic sponsors it now. So I saw the driving range for the women, and it was like, it was like the uh, gay and lesbian little Mardi Gras flag, you know, the rainbow flag of balls all out there. It was hilarious. All these kind of multicolored balls with Volvic and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I, I went and saw the one in Brisbane, the Australian PGA was good. <coughs> I think two or three years ago, we went and just Justin Spieth was there, Jordan Spieth was there, sorry. Um, and Schnedeker was there, and I think he had a shocker. So I don't, th I think he didn't make the cut. Send in all the guys from Australia there, so it's a good tournament to watch. And it's actually not a bad course to walk, um, to walk to. It's nice and flat. It's kind of because it's quite a lot of water, so you're kind of restricted to where you can go on certain holes. But you at least you get to go where all the landing zones are. So I might try and link it below, and you can watch that if you want to. Paul Gaisley, Odyssey, Big T. In my spare time, or if I'm at the range, if I'm not watching YouTube, I like to listen to podcasts. Is that something you enjoy? Do you know of any good podcasts or any non-golf related? <coughs> to be honest, I think a lot of people are asking Charlie and I do a podcast. Um, I like listening to podcasts when people are being brutally honest and not being, not so much being rude, but being brutally honest and um, giving giving an opinion that actually has content to it, not just going, for example, Tiger Woods is shit, why is that? Oh, because he's just not as good as he used to be. You'd rather hear, well, give us some thought as to why you don't think it's as good as it used to be. Your opinion might not be right or you might not agree with it, but at least if you've got an opinion that has a little bit of substance, then you can engage with it and you can kind of think, well, I don't agree with you for this or I do agree with you because of that. Um, Fish, if you're watching, I like, I, he and Gabe did a few and I really enjoyed them because, um, it, you find I think I think a good podcast if you can leave the podcast more educated and not so much it doesn't have to be right but just more educated on certain aspects of the conversation I think that's a better thing if you leave there angry and you don't really get anything out of it or you've skipped you know 30 minutes of a 35 minute podcast and it's pointless so I love to do a podcast I think this is what this mainly is just a podcast I'd rather answer and call, talk to questions to people than um yeah, then then try and find things to talk about because I think if you ask questions you want them answered, I'd rather engage with you that way or give me a topic and we can all talk about it and ask questions. So I think that's it. That's it for now. I think I can't. There's a few more, but we'll get into that to next time. Um, yeah, because we're already up to 17 minutes. So if you're still watching, I appreciate that. Watch to the end and I might get a couple of cents and I can go buy an ice cream cone. So Fish, if you're watching, you know about that. Um, but look, back to next, uh, we're going to do these on Friday, so the iPad there just shut down, all the questions gone. We're going to do this one not weekly on Friday, so that'll be Thursday night, American time, England, the same, you're in the Northern Hemisphere, so I don't know, I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> so my question to you is two things. I need questions for the next week's one not weekly, so anything over the past vlogs, stuff you like to see, anything at all, the more you engage, the better. Um, now my question to you again was Tiger was now two parts to what I'd like you to comment. First part is the question that you want to ask me or anything like that. It could be anything. My opinion on Scotty Cameron's to double ply, single ply, toilet paper, I don't care. Um, and my question to you is, do you think the media is being pretty hard on Tiger Woods? Because, you know, sooner or later is he just going to pack it up and pack it in because it's just, if the media are just on him, and nowadays, the media like negativity more than positivity. So, if Tiger Woods <coughs> shoots ten over par, it seems to spark more than if he shoots one under par. So, I'd like to know: Do you think the media have been unfair on Tiger? And if not, tell me why. And if you think they have, tell me why. And we'll get into it. But uh, thanks very much for watching the Why Not Weekly. We're up to the 19-minute mark. I don't think we're going to get to 20 minutes. If you if you're still watching at 20 minutes, well, who knows? Uh, but yeah guys so thanks very much for watching and um, yeah comment below give us a thumbs up and I really appreciate it so thanks guys and we'll get into another video and coming up uh, tomorrow I think it's part three of the Sangad vlog so and then we're going to get back into uh, Supreme Golf and there's a few other guys from the question and answer part two and I think we've got another couple of vlogs coming up and yeah so thanks guys 19 minutes and 47 seconds we've done alright uh, so yeah guys, comment below, tell me what you think, and see you next time.